Choosing your advisor in grad school is one of the most important decisions that you will make. I do believe that it's even more important than the actual work you're going to end up doing. Your relationship with your advisor will probably affect the next five years of your life and it can make or break your PhD. My point is, you need to make an informed decision. Hi, my name is Sagar and I'm a third year mechanical engineering PhD student at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. And here are eight things you need to know about choosing your advisor in grad school. First, start with a rough area of field that you're interested in. If it's something that you have done before, it's great. But even if it's not, and if it's something that you want to try out and it's something new, I think it's completely fine. Although some knowledge is required to get started with a new project, but that will even be true for any of the field you have worked in before. Prior knowledge might give you a slight head start, but you'll still need to figure out all of the details of the project. Doing research, I think, is a very transferable skill between projects. You have to identify the problem, fill your knowledge gaps, and just do the work. Then fail, and then try again, and the cycle keeps continuing. Anyway, start with the rough area that you're interested in and then make a list of professors that you like. Now, the first thing you want to do is go to the group website. If a research group maintains an active web page, I think that's always, always a green flag. That's the first impression a potential advisor or research group makes on you. And that's literally your first point of contact before you actually talk to a real person in the group. An active web page shows that how much an advisor actually cares about attracting the right kind of students to their own group. So on the group website, you can see things like how many people are there in the group, what kind of projects that they're working on, are there people that are working in the area that you're interested in? This can be really helpful because not all advisors are going to be hands-on and they might not train you actually during the initial stages of your PhD. So in that case, you can get a lot of help from the group seniors that actually work in your area and then you won't have to figure out everything by yourself, which trust me is going to be a big help. What kind of group size you want, I think, is a really subjective thing. Some people want a smaller group and they really want that one-on-one -on -one focus from their advisor, which I think is completely fair. For me personally, I wanted a medium-sized group, not too big that I don't get enough one-on-one -on -one time with my advisor, and not too small either that there's more focus on me and I'm expected to produce results more frequently. Plus, I was also looking at it from a socialization angle, which was also really important to me. Now that you've looked at the group website, the next thing you're gonna do is reach out to the professor asking them for a meeting. Obviously, this procedure is gonna be different for different schools and different departments, but for me personally, I had to directly reach out and cold email the professors, ask Asking them for a meeting. If a professor replies fairly quickly, that's a big bonus in my book because as their student, I would want my advisor to respond to me as promptly as possible. But of course, every professor has a different schedule and they're really busy people. So I don't think you should be too strict about this expectation. As long as they're not ghosting you, I think it should be fine. During the meeting, both you and your potential advisor are trying to judge if the other person is going to be a right fit for them. You've probably already sent your CV so the professor has some idea about your background. Now, now, it's time for you to ask questions and be well informed. Ask things like, do they already have any projects available that they think could be a good match for you? If not, do they have a rough idea in mind that they think you could try out? Will you be writing out a proposal? However, the exact project that you're going to be working on shouldn't be a deal breaker at all. Because like I said before, having a good advisor is far more important than the exact project that you're going to end up working on. Now, this might seem a little bit awkward at first, but I do think that it is a very good idea to ask about your funding situation. If you don't have a reliable source of funding, you might have to end up DAing a lot, which will take away time from your research. However, depending on what you actually want to do in life, you might actually like teaching, so that may even work out for you. So again, it's a personal preference. Personally, for me, teaching is definitely not a priority. So I want to focus on my research more. So I want more time for that. Now, if it's a little awkward for you to ask about your funding source in your first meeting with your potential advisor, which is completely normal, by the way, there are other ways to figure this out. Try to find out if the group has multiple projects running. That might be an indicator that they have good funding sources. You can also ask the current student about their own funding situation, which will also give you a good idea. You can also ask about the group culture, group meeting schedules, subgroup meetings, how often are you expected to give research updates, and so on. Of course, these things will become more clear as you actually join the group, but it's always a good idea to ask these things anyway. Also, one more important thing that I left out before is that from the group website, you can also get a really good idea of how long does it take for the students in the group to actually graduate. Of course, this is only possible if there's alumni information available on the web page. Another thing which I looked into, which was really important to me personally, was to see that where do the alumni from the group end up after graduating? Since I want to go into industry after I graduate, it was really important for me to find 
out what kind of industry roles or companies do the alumni from the group end up in. Now hopefully you get a good idea about the group after your meeting with the professor. The next really important step is to talk to a few people from the group. If the current students are willing to talk and help out, that's always a good sign. In my case, my advisor himself suggested that I talk to a few people from the group, which was great. I think the most important question that you can start with is the professor's advising style, because your relationship with your advisor is gonna affect the next five years or so of your life. So I think it's really important. Is the professor a micromanager? Are they hands off? Are they too hands off? And help isn't available when you ask for it. Are they easy to reach? What kind of research progress do they expect? How do they deal with students' failures? What is their temperament like? Get as specific as you want. You get the point. <laughs> I think you can even ask the students if they are happy in the group in general or not. What do they like or don't like about the group? Then of course, talking to multiple people is important because every person has their own opinions. So make sure you talk to multiple people and make an informed decision. Next, I want to talk about a few other things which might not seem too important at first glance, but I think even the smallest things when compounded over five years can start to bother a person. So let's talk about them. Ask the people what they like to do for fun. Does the group hang out or like to do any activities together? If the students from the group say that they don't get much time to do anything else other than research, then that might be a red flag. Door the office space. What do the offices look like? How often do people come into the office? What do the desks look like? You're going to be working there for five years or so, so it's important that you feel comfortable in the space. Are other group members' desks around you or are you going to be working alone? Again, this is a personal preference. Some people like to work alone. But me, personally, I like to have other people around me to talk to once in a while so that I don't work in complete isolation. Because, you know, socialization is important. Being lonely is as bad as smoking two packs of cigarettes a day. So go out and talk to people. If it's an experimental lab, then what do the labs look like? Do you guys have enough equipment? Again, you can ask the students about lab culture, research pacing, timelines, funding sources, and all of that fun stuff. And then finally, this video is to provide you with a rough guideline when you're looking for an advisor so that you're equipped with knowledge and you end up making an informed decision. But ultimately, it does come down to your own personal preference and your priorities. Personally, I wanted a not a micromanager, but not too laid back advisor who is easy to reach. I wanted a medium sized group with people going into industry after they graduate and not taking too long to graduate either. I think I got lucky and got a lot of things I was looking for. Not everything of course, but you know, that's life. But yeah, I hope it works out for you too. If there's one thing that I would like you to take away from this video, is that choosing your advisor in grad school is one of the most important decisions you will make. So just approach it with care, you know? That's it. And other than that, how are you? All good? What's your plan for the weekend? Let me know in the comments and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.